Um, the name of my talk is How We Used Our Stats to Win Best Government Reporting in Ohio. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So first, what is I at Ohio? So obviously, you know, nowadays you get a much better ROI if you use, um, you know, search words or, and whatnot. So, you know, that particular slice of business for newspapers is going away, but that second civic value, public knowledge, uh, benefits the whole community. Um, you know, it encourages transparency, uh, government accountability, it fosters a sense of place. Uh, and we've got some really hard statistics on this, um, you know, just in terms of why it matters. Um, you know, if you don't have a reporter there saying, well, why are we, why are we spending money on this? Why are we spending money on that? Why are we, you know, <laughs> then actually your municipal borrowing costs go up, um, you know, and then you, know, you sort of have this whole cascade of effects. There's fewer registered voters, uh, fewer candidates run for mayor. Um, so essentially, so what does that matter? Uh, so essentially we're open source journalism, right? You used open source things before. I just took a screenshot of, of sort of various other, um, you know, nonprofit news is now sort of a, a $500 million um, uh, thing, but you know, what's really matters is the community, right? Um, so it, it really matters to, you know, involve people in the process and, and that's, um, that's how you get it. Um, so our purpose is to, you know, promote the public good by pursuing in-depth, underreported, and high-impact journalism. So, you know, it's important because we're kind of flipping this model on its head, right? Instead of saying, oh my gosh, we have a hole, we need to fill it, let's go find a <laughs> crime story or something. We're kind of stepping back and saying, what are the most important things that people in Ohio need to know? And how can we use the best tools um, to communicate that to them? Um, so we have a large reach because, um, you know, again, our model is, is we, uh, so we give it away. <laughs> um, so we've been on 149 other different outlets, uh, obviously mostly public radio stations, um, but obviously all the other um, big websites um, and uh, Associated Press, Washington Post, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we've won a ton of awards. What I'm going to talk to you about right now is this uh, Best Government Issues reporting right here. Uh, but most importantly, you know, we're not looking for clicks because if we wanted clicks, we would publish cat videos, right? <laughs> we're looking for impact. So, you know, right here, I'm going to talk to you about uh, a project that we did on property taxes. It took five people um, working on this project for 10 months. So really important. This was not a new issue. This is an issue that had it affected people for a long time. Um, but every time you saw something, it would be like, oh, they found this big building that someone sold and, you know, they just sold the business and we'll get into that in a second. But I really wanted to uh, concentrate, how does this actually affect people? Because there are people who are paying more money because of this. And how could we kind of figure it out? So um, kind of funny, as I was going through and I was trying to figure out what the property tax would be, <laughs> the auditor was like, oh, well, you could never... Uh, calculate all that. I mean, we have 100,000 properties. And I said, actually, you have 104,000. We've already downloaded them all. <laughs> so that's really where R comes into this. Um, you know, it helped us to, um, you know, kind of contextualize. I mean, we use it all the time for other stuff, but, um, you know, this kind of is a great example of how R helped us contextualize a, store, uh, a problem that's, you know, really affecting a lot of other people. So here, let's just say there's a hypothetical um, tax district that needs to raise 200 bucks. Um, so first you have these bare buildings. Um, they're valued at $500 each. These are valued at $100 each. So, you know, the tax levy has to be set at 10% to raise $200. Um, so each large property has a $50 tax bill. Each small property has a $10 tax bill, right? Now, let's say that these properties want to be sold well, and this is legal in Ohio, <laughs> and actually most other states, only 14 states have addressed this. Um, you can actually spin off this property uh, into a separate LLC. Uh, so even though this business only has this property as its asset, you can then sell the business, and because you are technically selling the business and you are not technically selling the property, you don't have to report that um, new valuation. So let's say these are now valued at $1,000 each, right? Um, you'd have to set the tax levy to 6.6% to raise that, that same $200. Um, and each large property tax bill goes up and each small property tax bill goes down. 
Um, so here's an example, um, 4121 Palmer Park Circle East in Columbus. Um, so it was originally built for, I think it was like 16 million. The auditor put it at its new value at 24.5 million, but they had a contract for 35.25 million. <laughs> so had they sold this property outright, they would have had to pay $65,000 in conveyance taxes. And they'd have to pay an additional $309,000 uh, each year in property tax. Um, so you can go right on the, the uh, website of the, the treasurer. You can actually see where all these taxes go. So, you know, uh, mental health, children's services, parks, library, like this is all money that gets funded back into the community. Um, zoo, you know, we're taking money from the penguins. <laughs> So how did we find this data? So this was actually the trickiest part. Um, so there are commercial entities that go through and they, um, they look at different property values. They were actually really terrible to us, even though we offered to pay for the data, but um, they didn't want us to publish any of the data. And uh, even though we promised to anonymize it, and that's obviously a bit of a problem if you run a news outlet, right? So we looked here, we basically took uh, things from two separate offices. We looked at the county auditor's website, and then we reconciled that with the county recorder's website, right? So if you're lending money for a building and you want that, um, that loan collateralized, right? You wanna make sure, <laughs> so the bank has this vested interest in making sure to tell the whole world, um, this property is worth X million dollars, right? Whereas, um, you know, the, the business has sort of this interest in not reporting how much they owe on the business. Um, so essentially, we, we took um, from both of these. All right, so now putting this all together, this is something called the DTE 515. It's this very thick thing. It goes through, this is for one county. Um, this is an older one, 2017. But the good news is we actually only need, for every tax district, we only need one number. So this is just an example. Here's tax district 22. This is the form that we need. This is the composite reduction factor report for 2016. Blah, blah. Okay, so there's two uh, separate tax brackets, um, residential property and then non-residential property. So this is the ones that we're talking about. And we want the composite effective rate, right? So here is all the things, all the taxes that you're paying for, firemen, police, general fund, right? And then this is the, uh, then this is the Mills system. So that's, um, and then you put it into your formula. So you take the value, uh, you multiply it by 0.35. Don't ask me why, that's how what the legislature came up with. You multiply that by the effective rate, um, you convert that from mills, and then you get your taxes. So you see on the left side, we come from this completely um, made up number, right? <laughs> the value of your property. And then on the right side is this very solid number that you need to pay every year or the government takes your property. So I have all this uh, commented out um, pretty much. So I didn't want to just read you my code. I kind of wanted to get through what it wants, but this is sort of a highlight of it. So um, two issues we ran into, one was uh, each commercial property, you know, each mortgage tended to be for several parcels. Um, so we just looked at the auditor's value. So if you got a mortgage for five parcels and the auditor said, you know, this particular parcel is worth 75%, um, we said, okay, so that's the mortgage share. We said, okay, well, that's the most important uh, parcel. That's the one probably with the building on it, et cetera, right? And then, um, we looked only for potential outliers, right? Um, we wanted to get a conservative count, you know, if it's like 10% off, whatever. But um, so in this case, and I completely made this up, um, you know, we said anything that was 25% or more. Um, and then we had verified just means we had a team of interns look at it to make sure we didn't, um, you know, publish something wrong. <laughs> so, and then this is just an if else statement. Um, if it's an outlier, it's the mortgage share. If not, it's the market value, the market value of the auditor. Uh, and then we create this tax rate comparison, right? Um, so I basically came up with what I call the true value, um, but, you know, the value that a bank is willing to lend and um, is willing to, um, you know, spend on that. And we found 116 billion. <laughs> 
So keep in mind that this, the same amount of tax is being collected every time, right? It just means that those smaller uh, buildings are paying a greater share of the taxes, right? So you go past a building, a smaller building, you know, it's probably two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000. You can kind of tell that. You look at a bigger apartment building, is this $24 million or $25 million? You know, it's hard to tell <laughs> unless you know how much someone actually paid for that, right? But that million dollars translates into a lot of taxes. Um, so then, so I just did this based on the median property owner's amount overpaid in each tax district with the largest discrepancy. Um, but obviously everything, it depends on two factors, right? And um, this wasn't coded in R, this is coded in Tableau. You, um, you have to, you know, know what tax district your uh, particular property is in. And you also have to know, you know, what are the other things um, in there. So there's also a property tax calculator. You can select your tax district and you can recalculate what your tax bill would be. Um, this is the story if you want to read the whole story. Um, and then this is just our GitHub. Um, so this is, is uh, you know, well common to doubt. And we have a whole thing on our methodology and how we have sort of undercounted and um, so on and so forth. Um, so you might want to check that out. And then really important, um, if you get a chance today, please sign up for our newsletter. Um, it's free. It helps us show funders how we help the community. Um, and it helps keep, uh, if you've been to our site, it's ad free. Yay. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's really important to us. So I know I kind of went through quite a bit there. So I'm going to go through the questions. How am I doing on time? Oh my gosh. Oh, I did do it. Yay. <laughs> we, are, we are ahead of schedule. I, I, that was awesome. Uh, I am here to give you energy. Yeah, you had the Slido up. Uh, yeah, so let's, let's do that. And R, or is R popular in research journalism, or are you the odd one out in the field? Uh, and then there's also a comment about ggplot. So you mentioned you use Tableau. Was there a reason for that? Or as Tableau, as opposed to some of the libraries that R has for visualization? Sure. So, um, I would say it's it's becoming more and more popular. I think that, um, so there's something called uh, NICAR, which this is gonna make you laugh. It stands for the National Institute of Computer Assisted Reporting, which sounds like, well, that's because they started it 20 years ago. Um, you know, obviously everyone's using a computer now. So I think it's, um, I'm definitely more rare. <laughs> Um, but it's becoming more popular as more journalists. I think there's, there was sort of a, a mental hurdle of, oh, I'm a journalist, I can't do math. And then I, I think that's very much changing as we're kind of realizing that, you know, our, our goal isn't to just, um, you know, sort of throw things out there at people, but to actually, you know, be able to, to understand things better and to, um, to communicate that. I, I love this question that people are already voting to the top. Uh, what advice do you have if, you know, you're on a call with a bunch of people using R who want to get involved in their local communities using R and data analysis? Yeah, well, I mean, give us a call. Obviously, um, I in Ohio sort of thrives based on, you know, our, our community. Um, and, you know, we're trying to, um, you, you know, we're part, and it, obviously we're not just doing this in Ohio, we're kind of part of this national movement in that we want to, um, you know, sort of better understand um, just sort of the news in general. So, um, so yeah, I mean, we would be, be happy to have your help. Um, and, um, you know, there's no particular, um, I guess, uh, group that I can think of, but, you know, it's definitely something that, um, you know, is, is a group project as you will. <laughs> uh a question just came in um, about how you collected the data. It looks like you were looking at, you know, the county auditor website and like the reporter website. Uh, did you use a web scraper? Was it something you downloaded? How did that work? So we did a combination. Um, this is, I found this out the hard way. This is actually data that is very expensive because remember I talked about all these commercial properties, uh, commercial valuation companies. So, um, you know, if you can justify when you're negotiating, you know, this is sort of a very high level negotiation when you're buying 
a $35 million apartment complex, right? You are saying, um, you know, how much is it, uh, is it really going to be worth? You know, if you can justify, hey, I should pay 25 million and not 26 million, um, you know, that that's something that could save you a million dollars in your business. So, you know, it's, it's actually, um, it's something that, uh, uh, so long story short, I got, I, I don't like to use the term scraping. I like refer it automated data downloads because these are all public records, right? Like this is stuff that we would be entitled to anyway. So um, uh, for example, for, for Cuyahoga, they were like, well, you can download one a minute. And then I, you know, multiplied that out. I was like, okay, cool. So we'll be done next year <laughs> with this story. <laughs> So they ended up just uh, sort of giving it to us. We did Warren County because Hamilton County was all in PDFs. And, you know, what am I supposed to do with that? I can't, <laughs> it's not really helpful to me if I can't, if I can't do that. So um, we mostly downloaded it, but sometimes we, um, we just got it for Freedom of Information Act requests. Okay. Uh, there was actually, you mentioned PDF. Um, you know, John is submitting a couple of questions. Thank you, John. Uh, about like uh, how much useful government data is only available in PDF or other similar analysis unfriendly formats. <laughs> that is a good question. And and R actually has some really good OCR uh, packages that we have used. Um, so generally, and you, and if you've been to our website, anytime we release stuff, we generally release it with the files. In this particular case, I didn't because it's changing so rapidly. You know, people are buying and selling properties all the time. People are, um, some of them are getting exempt, some of them are not getting exempt. So um, because this is sort of a fast moving target, we were like, okay, we'll take a snapshot. And, um, you know, because anytime you release a data set, you also have to maintain it. And so on and so forth. So I was like, you know, if the government's maintaining this anyway, and anyone is is enabled, you know, anyone can go and, and request this data. Um, so we didn't uh, release it this time, but we released the code so that anyone can use it. 